let me quickly take you through this with the issue here is how to just to demonstrate the use of the ratios that I talked about with regard to the mixture of crude protein and ingredient uh, sources. So first of all, I mentioned a guide and we usually typically tell you that there's a set of four, all right, uh, JPEG images that you can study in order to learn how to get up and running using this application uh, very quickly. So what I'm doing here is just to show you the, the four JPEG images that I don't, that I don't support there located in a folder called uh, the RF look at that that's the name there RF-Pix-Guide it's always in the email that I send the software uh, used to send the software to so you just look at it you see the download link to the zip folder you unzip it and basically that's what you get now in the in the uh, JPEG images in guide one right you have the instructions about how to make entries into the ingredients table nutrients table you know and all that uh, but I want to take you to this other one, this guy too. All right, computing a rational formula using the Excel VDL. So basically, it's as you said, it contains step by step instructions. You can see here, you see the uh, uh, annotation, sorry, A to D is there. And then you come here, you can see that at A, it says, Don't do this and all of that. So the instructions with regard to how to use more than one crude protein source, all right, are on this particular one. You see, choose mixture at C, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to demonstrate it, so I'm going to put it down. I just want you to understand that you can come and read this and understand it. Now, the third one, oh, I shouldn't have done, uh, sorry, the fourth one, guide four. I just want you to see, um, there is a set of rules specified for the use of this advanced uh, version of the uh, piercing square computation technique. This is an advanced technique because it allows you to use more than two ingredients at a time in a rational formulation and it's actually effective. So at the bottom of the uh, page that's automatically generated by the app, you see that there are some important notes you know, about how to make use of this um, technique of rational formulation. There are certain requirements that you must follow, all right, with regard to the ratio in which you use the plant protein in conjunction with animal proteins and all of that. Uh, I will explain that. Uh, what I will do is uh, maybe in a separate clip, a short audio, I'll quickly explain that. But I don't want to let the video run while I'm just not doing it on the screen. So I'll explain that. But you read up that, that tells you the reason why we, we're talking about ratio in the use of the animal processors like fish meal with the plant processors like soybean meal or uh, granite cake and things like that. All right? So let's go into the application. Just want to stop so we go this way. All right, so this is a login screen. Let me just continue. Okay, so use the rational formula. It effectively more or less reproduces. Let me pause it. Effectively just reproduce. I'm effectively reproducing the <laughs> same video I did before. But this time I just want to demonstrate its specifics. All right, so you click the automatic ration. Uh, sorry, the use automatic form. And you get this error message. Error value is mistaken. Read it when you are when you when you are home. Basically, what you need to do to clear that error message is you see you look for every place where you have errors. So you can see that there's a div error here. Now, how do you resolve that? I'll show you. But there's also a div error in here. The first thing you need to do here, therefore, is to choose maybe like another source. Let's say granite cake, right? You want just get the thing not to show any div error in here. Now, regarding the div error in the section for uh, Processors, can you see it's gone now? All right, so that's it. But there's something we need to do, so let's go back to the main menu. All right, go to the update field ingredients table. And I want to show you something. Look at the color here ratio. All right, uh, if you check the instructions I showed you earlier in guide four, the JPEG image, you see that I specified I was saying that there's a requirement the um, relationship between the plant protein source and animal protein source because the animal protein source contains a more. Uh, comprehensive uh, profile of amino acids all right therefore it is richer in terms of nutrients it can deliver compared to the plant protein source it's a superior form of protein all right so that's why fish meal you see is using a ratio of one to four so that for every part of fish meal you need to use four parts of granite cake not just because of the uh, fact that it's more expensive but also because it has a richer uh, complement of you know this entire spectrum of amino acids that is required for most animals to survive. I mean, one of the animals that's very sensitive to amino acid uh, variability 
is the pain and then rabbits as well so you need to be careful with them some of the other animals are more tolerant they just need lysine and mecaronin all right so that's why you are required to do that so when you, basically the rule is that for if you're dealing with two um what's it called um protein sources that have close uh nutrient uh, protein nutrient content all right you are to use if the one is an animal source and the other is a plant source use the same in the ratio of one part of the animal protein source to four parts of the other one now you need to specify that for the software to use in this column so in front of this uh, ingredient now cannot click we put four and then in front of this one we we'll put one all right let's see if there's any other protein uh source that we want to Okay, here, look at this. You can see rabbit meat here. Alright, as is ratio of one. Well, okay, compared to uh what's called plant protein, you can see it's an animal protein source. Blood meat is also used one. I get it. Okay, I'm trying to see if I can find any other plant protein here, like soya bean meat or something. Uh let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, none. But if there was soya bean meat, that's a plant protein source. What you would do therefore is uh to to use it. Alright? So Basically, once you've done that, I think it's another. Let me see. Uh, this is interesting. Here you have maize forage having a pro crude protein content of <coughs> excuse me, 31.6. That's a good one. So you would want to do four parts of that to any animal protein source. Do you understand? So this is basically it. If you were using the uh, granite cake in conjunction with the uh, maize forage that has like one point. I mean, those ones you just use them the ratio of one to one because they are both plant protein sources. So I hope you understand the logic. This is with the, the intention of balancing out the complement of nutrients that deliver to the animal. This is very important. Then, of course, like I said, uh, if you look at some of these items, it's in terms of there's a way that helps also with costing, but mostly it's because of the nutrient contribution that they are making, all right, and the need for it to uh, to achieve a balance, not to overuse an item that has a very rich complement of nutrients. You know, so you don't want to use only fish meal. You want to use it in conjunction with something else that can help to boost the protein contribution, but not necessarily boost the price or the cost of your feed formation. I, I didn't want to spend too much time on that, but I think it was worth telling you. So if you go up now to the main menu, go back to the ration formation uh, table. Then this time around now, you do the automatic form. Watch and see. Uh, you shouldn't get any error now. Okay. Right. So you see, generate the table. Now here is what was necessary what made it necessary for us to go and do that uh, specification of protein sources you see here to choose your protein sources you have to first of all specify them so i think if i recall correctly i'm hoping i remember sweet potato then uh oh i can't remember to use this groundhog cake fish meal let me just use groundhog cake and fish meal and uh let's see okay let's use those all right so because we're using those three all right um, here we're going to specify mixture so you go to the bottom and choose the option mixture you can't mention any of the specific protein uh, ingredient contributors because you have three of them then you click the refresh button excuse me okay you can see it automatically we had sorry I, I knew i was wrong on this it wouldn't have been sweet potato it probably have been uh, Maze for it. I think that's the one we saw that had that uh, contribution of protein. Let's do it again. Refresh. You've got to pick the right protein source, of course. Okay. Um, so you see now it's it's on the ratio of four of uh, maize for it to four of uh, ground cake to one of fish meal. You know. Now, then the mixture here. So it this the software has now generated for you the actual quantities of those three protein sources that you're going to use. So if you look at this uh, section estimated percentage to use in ration this is the portion now you see you can see quantity of mixture is 84.19 all right out of the 100 percent then it breaks it down quantity of maize from that will be maize for it from that will be 37.41 quantity of granite cake from that will be 37.41 quantity of fish meal will be 9.354 understand then the quantity of fish meal here is 15. these are the values you will then post in here you see to the relevant field wherever you have granite cake Put in the quantity of granite cake that's uh, estimated percentage fish meal then all the other ones that are fixed just put in the quantity that are you know maybe it's um dog premix or well, okay in this case maybe just dog premix because this was someone was doing a dog uh, ration confirmation uh you know calcium methionine you know those are really fixed so you put all those in but this variable cost inputs variable uh, 
input inlet, all right, the values you would actually be, gener be generated automatically here as estimates. Then you put them in here. Then you begin to tweak them as we showed in the other video till you get what you want. That's it. So I hope you understand this, but we're going to talk about it more. And uh, if there's any of you that has a problem using this, because this is going to be a video I'll give to everybody uh, who's a user. Then all we have to do is you and I will come online, all right? You will log on to your system. I log on to my system. And I'll tell you, okay, what do you have on the screen now? You tell me what you have, then I'll guide you till you get it and generate a similar result to what I have on my own system. That's what I've done with others and the spot project, so that you understand. So if you also want to discuss the logic behind the use of these ratios, uh, the way it's been done in this uh, example, then we can always talk about that, right? But that's the way this particular technique of rational formulation is done. All right, thanks.